Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store where I've compiled some of the very best knives and gear. There's a whole bunch of different categories, including some of my own personal recommendations. There's something down here for everybody, so make sure you take a look. Thanks. What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I've got an interesting battle slash discussion video to share with you guys. I would like to directly compare the classic Benchmade Griptilian, in this case, the large Griptilian, with the newer uh, Benchmade Super Freak. Not the regular Fe Freak, the Super Freak. The reason I want to compare these two, and by the way, I'm far from the first person to compare these two, um, is because, you know, for a long time, the Benchmade Griptilian was one of my favorite knives of all time. And it, it still absolutely is one of the best knives out there. But with the addition of the Super Freak to Benchmade's line, and also, you know, frankly, the existence of this guy, which, you know, at some point might get another comparison video with one or both of these guys. Um, the Benchmade Griptilian has lost some of its light as of recently. And I've said multiple times in other videos that the Super Freak has sort of filled the void of, you know, where Benchmade's best knife for a long time was the was the Griptilian. And then the, the RSK MK1 G2 came along with arguably better materials, better design, better all the way around for less money, right? Now there's a lot of uh, elements about the Benchmade Griptilian that might still cause somebody to, to buy one. Um, one of the main things is the custom shop, right? Getting exactly what you want. But is the Super Freak the best Benchmade knife? You know, for a lot of people, the answer is going to be no. A lot of people are like, well, what about the 940? What about this? What about that? Right? But I think uh, it's, it's pretty clear. A lot of people can agree with me that these are still two of Benchmade's best knives and they have a very similar design, right? They also have, they have very similar pricing if we're comparing, you know, apples to apples in terms of available materials. So, it's not going to be a classic battle on my channel. I used to have a scoring system. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to talk about these knives because there's different reasons to get, you know, one or the other, right? Depending on the individual. Really quick, let's take some measurements. Uh, overall length of the Benchmade Griptilian is coming in at almost exactly, yeah, in fact, right on the dot, eight inches. The blade length is coming in at about three and a half and cutting edge is about 3.4. The Super Freak comes in much larger. Uh, half an inch larger, about eight and a half inches. We have a 3.65 inch blade and a three and a half inch cutting edge. So the Benchmade Super Freak absolutely has more cutting edge. Um, both of them operate, of course, with the axis lock. Boy, that's smooth. This is a Griptilian that was sent to me by a viewer and it is easily one of the smoothest Griptilians <laughs> that I've ever felt. This uh, Super Freak was generously gifted to me by my good buddy at Justin the Hunter on Instagram. Give him a follow, absolutely. Let's go ahead and weigh him here. Both of them utilize, you know, a similar uh, structure, meaning that on the inside, what we have is a cartridge liner. Now on the Super Freak, to cut down on some of that weight, it's about halfway through. And I think actually on the Griptilian, it's very similar. Um, there's more, there's actually more of a cartridge liner on the inside or a larger cartridge liner on the inside of the Griptilian. Um, but I think their weights, I mean, just in hand, I can tell you they feel about the same. And I probably should know this, but it's always fun to react on camera organically. So the Benchmade Griptilian in the G10 configuration comes in at 4.37 ounces. The Super Freak comes in at 4.27 ounces. Are you serious? I was convinced that the Super Freak would be just a little bit lighter. Let's do it again. Super Freak 4.27 Griptilian 4.34. So there you go. Almost exactly the same in weight, but surprisingly, I mean, there you go. It's like what I was saying there. The excess um, cartridge liner in the Griptilian is actually causing it to weigh a little bit more. Now, I know that the standard version of the Griptilian is the lightweight FRN version, right? They also have a lightweight version of the Super Freak. So you could compare those two if you wanted to. I'm going to be comparing these. I think these are, you know, a lot of like, especially like knife enthusiasts, knife people. I mean, people for of all over, you know, for different walks of life, collect or, or go after different styles of knives for a wide variety of different reasons. But we're focusing on these two right here. Um, so, you know, in terms of carry profile, um, both of these can come in it. Well, this super freak, I think, I can't remember if this one comes with a standard clip or not. In any case, it's trivial because you can get any clip on any Benchmade knife that you want. In the case of the Griptilian, it can actually be ordered from the custom shop with just about any clip that you could want. Um, both of these knives are actually sporting the same clip. One's satin and one is black. This is Benchmade's best clip, in my opinion. Uh, close second would probably be the new, um, you know, the new uh, bug out clip, the shorter clip. That's absolutely a great clip. But in terms of uh, carry profile, they're almost identical. And in terms of thickness, 
They are absolutely identical. Contouring and chamfering spots are a little bit different all the way around. In terms of ergonomics, both knives you can get a full grip on. Both feel super, super similar in hand. This is just a little bit of a bigger knife. Um, in the case of the Super Freak, in this, well, in a standard Freak, you're looking at S3B, but in the Super Freak, you're looking at M4 and a uh, sort of layered um, black and gray G10, and then you've got the red liners and the red barrel spacers. So this is one of the most attractive knives that uh, Benchmade has ever come out with. Uh, CPM M4, you'll hear very few people complaining about it. It is not corrosion resistant, but these do come coated, um, which helps protect it a little bit. But CPM M4 has the same edge or very, very similar edge retention um, to M390. Uh, same similar edge retention to M4. Yeah, am I saying that correctly? <laughs> Long day. Um, except it is much tougher, much tougher, much more edge uh, stability in M4, making it ideal for heavier use on a folding knife. What does that mean? It means instead of the edge chipping under heavy use, as the, is the case sometimes with M390, and it depends on the heat treatment, it depends on the blade geometry, final edge geometry, right? But M4 is all the way around going to be um, uh, better in terms of the heavier use stuff. And on, on top of that, I believe Benchmade is known for doing a pretty darn good heat treat with M4 getting it right, right? Um, so that's awesome. Um, the Benchmade Griptilian, I mean, the the very the most basic form of it uses S30V, which is just fine. It's it's not as edge retentive. It's not as tough as M4, but it is more stainless. It's a much more well-rounded steel, and the steel is actually made for folding knives, right? So a lot of people just prefer it. Eh, I just want a blade steel that's going to be good, you know, okay at a lot of different things, not necessarily the best in any one thing, right? So if you need a blade that's more corrosion resistant, well, the M4 is out right away. You don't have a choice with a Super Freak unless you're watching this in the, in the future and they've come out with a million different steels. I'm kind of hoping they add the Super Freak to the Benchmade Custom Shop if they haven't already, uh, in which case you'd be able to select different steels. But I believe as of right now, that is not an option. I'm going to feel really dumb if I'm wrong. With the Benchmade Griptilian, S30V and FRN is standard, but if you go on the custom shop, which actually is where this guy was created, despite it looking like the Knife Works exclusive in black micarta and S, uh, M390, uh, it is a custom shop Griptilian. You can have CPMD2, you can have, do they still have 154CM? I feel like they don't. S30V, CPM20CV, I think you can get S90V, um, and it wouldn't surprise me if they added Damascus Steel in there at some point. They've done that with a bunch of other uh, models from their line. So you can get a wide variety of different steels and also a wide variety of different blade shapes. Tanto, drop point, uh, sheep's foot, right? There's a whole bunch of different things there. So while I'm going to say this, I mean, on the spine, both, both knives, I believe, are about 125 thousandths, right? So let's go ahead and measure that real quick. Benchmade Griptilian, uh, 1.14. Okay, so 1.15 on the spine. Maybe this guy's a little bit thicker. Let's try 1.15. So they're both about 115 thousandths on the spine. Um, so not super thick to start out with, but you can see here if we're comparing the drop point blade, um, the nice thing about the blade on the, uh, the Super Freak is that you still have a flat up top, right? You're still making use of all this thickness down here running down to the tip. It still remains fairly thick down to the tip, so it's going to be tough, especially uh, overly emphasized by the M4, but you have much more room to drop down to the cutting edge, making this an absolute joy and a performer. On the uh, standard Griptilian drop point, in my opinion, the, um, the Super Freak's better because the standard Griptilian drop point has much more of a flat, which is aiding in durability, especially with a steel like S30V, which is not as tough. It's not necessarily a weak steel, it's just not as tough as M4, right? Um, toughness is, or, or durability of the blade is emphasized by the geometry, and then you have much less room to drop down toward the, towards the cutting edge. Now, both knives slice plenty fine, they both cut pl plenty fine, right? But even up against like Benchmade Sheep's Foot style blade, the Tanto especially, none of them have quite the same, you know, final cutting geometry as the Super Freak. So, it's more of a performer. So if we're, we're talking about performance, points to the Griptilian for having way more blade styles, way more steels, right, that are going to be better or worse in different scenarios. Um, and then points to the, um, the Super Freak for having just better cutting geometry all the way around. In pretty much every single version of either model, you're going to have the thumb stud slightly in the cutting path. It's a little more so in the Super Freak. So even though the Super Freak has about 
a quarter of an inch more cutting edge, it's actually reduced a little bit if you're gonna cut straight down by the fact that the um, thumb stud is just in the cutting path a little bit. It's not that big of a deal, especially if you're cutting you know, regular cut diagonal. Unless if you're cutting straight down into cardboard, that's gonna be kind of the case. You're also a little further away from the cutting edge and the grip with this guy. You can see there where my index finger is and where the cutting edge starts is further away. And then if you go all the way out here to where the cutting edge you know, actually starts, if you're gonna cut straight down, you're quite a ways off from it. Whereas the griptilian, you're a little bit closer and you're about right here. So I'd say it's it's up, up to a quarter inch further away. That's a teeny tiny detail, but it's one that I think people would like to know about. You know, so it's kind of, it, it's hard to say, you know, which blade is actually more performance oriented. They're both exceptionally good. They're just a little bit different. In terms of ergonomics, I'm not gonna say that either one is better. There's a slight, um, extra zone right here. I could, I suppose you could call that a lock-in zone. It's not necessarily forcing your fingers into any particular spot because it's nicely rounded down here, right? So you can kind of move all over the place, but truthfully, there's not a whole lot more room. I mean, if you're talking about where your fingers are supposed to go, you can see there, right? I mean, if I move the blades, it's almost exactly the same in terms of where you're holding the knife. And pocket clip position on this guy, not a hot spit spot. Pocket clip position on this guy, not a hot spot, right? So it's about the same. The hardware is also extremely similar. You can see there we've got one extra screw here, one extra screw here holding things in. We have the Chicago style screws on, you know, the front scale on the F Super Freak and on the, actually on the Benchmade Griptilian. Yeah, they're both on the front scale of, of these, but it hasn't always been the case. The amount of hardware is basically the same on both. And they're also both fully ambidextrous. You can put the pocket clip on the left or right side. And because it's an axis lock, left-handed people can enjoy it too. So that's roughly about the same. The position of the lanyard hole is slightly different in this guy. It's completely out of the way of the pocket clip emphasizing or prioritizing the pocket clip. On this guy, for whatever reason, they decided to put it up here. It is prioritized over the pocket clip, but it's almost trivial considering that much is sticking out of your pocket on the Super Freak and this much is sticking out of the pocket on the Benchmade Griptilian. So it's almost exactly the same, right? Um, actuation and deployment, again, um, <laughs> terrible example, deploy it. No problem there. I can deploy it with the reverse flick, right? Same thing on the Super Freak. You can feel the excess weight and mass and length of the blade when you're deploying the Super Freak. They both feel almost the same, but this guy, the fact that it's a little bit longer, the weight of that blade, you can you can feel it. Not gonna say that you can't feel it. The Benchmade Griptilian has a bunch of different styles, you know, texturing styles. This is pretty standard, this diamond pattern right here. It's the same thing you get on the FRN. It's a different feeling on the FRN, but it is texturing, right? In the custom shop, you have a bunch of different options for the ribs and you know all these different, you can get it completely smooth, whatever you want. On this guy, it's just this texturing. It does a plenty good job. Again, it's kind of, it's kind of trivial because both knives have great ergonomic designs. Both knives you're gonna be able to hang on to and manipulate just fine. One's just a little bit longer. That's the difference, right? They're so close uh, in terms of that, but if you're looking for options, the Benchmade Griptilian is gonna win in that area because you just have more options. Yes, you have to pay for those options. We're gonna get to that, um, I promise, absolutely. Um, again, in, in terms of the internals and the hardware, I mean, it's basically the exact same structural integrity. The Benchmade Griptilian has a little bit of texturing down here, but I, it's, I don't know that it's really all that functional, you know? Um, but the internals, the only difference is the cartridge liner in the inside of the Super Freak is just a little bit different. They both have that same weak, weakness. Uh, they both use Omega Springs. Omega Springs can break. They usually don't unless you've just been beating on it for a super long time and they finally go, in which case, as long as you haven't done any modifications yourself and caused any damage to the knife, Benchmade usually warrants them. Some people report Omega Springs breaking the day they get the knife. That's very, very rare, and it doesn't happen often. It should not cause you to shy away from Benchmade at all. Benchmade has one of, if not the very best folding knife warranties ever. They are amazing, and it is absolutely part of the extra cost that goes into these knives. A lot of people are going to eh, for that material, for those materials, I could get this or this or this from China, or this or this or this from this brand. Okay, but you're getting a substantially better warranty in in you know most cases with a Benchmade knife. So a lot of times with that, a lot of times you you know you see that it's like why does it cost thirty forty dollars more than these other folding knives? In my opinion, it's well worth it knowing that. As long as I keep using this knife the way that it's supposed to be used, Benchmade has my back. So I like that. You know, I'm appreciative of that. But let's talk about overall cool factor. Yes, I know that you can get the Griptilian in so many different variants, right? Cool factor is going to look different for a lot of people, right? Aesthetics is going to be more or less preferable in more or less forms 
or in, in many different forms for a lot of people. So you do have more options with the Griptilian. One thing that you cannot get uh, with the Griptilian other than one version, and that's the Dash 1 versions that have the, the gray G10 with the blue liners and the blue standoffs, right? That's kind of Benchmade's version of this knife. The layer G10 that comes in this guy. Not everybody's gonna like it. I really like it, especially with the contrast of the red barrel spacers and the red liners. I don't think you can get red barrel spacers in any current production version of the Griptilian. I know that there was a version a while ago that a special run version, I think it was, was it D2 or was it M4? Actually, I think it was, it was M4. It had red barrel spacers and I don't know what exclusive or what sprint it was, but there was a version of it. There's also a version that had multi-layer G10, much like what you're seeing here, and it had green barrel spacers, but those versions are long gone. So this multi-layer G10 um, is something that you can only get right now with the Super Freak, and that's kind of cool. For a lot of people, they're really gonna wanna go for that. Um, another thing that is not changeable, though, on the other hand of the, uh, the Benchmade Super Freak is the fact that all the blades are coated. Um, I don't think they do a gray coating version of the Super Freak. I could be wrong about that, but if they don't, they definitely should, right? Just like the Benchmade 810 Contigo, it has the black ones and it's got the gray ones, but the gray ones are still coated. That would be nice. I think these they're, they're Cerakote, which is a plenty durable and plenty appropriate for a steel like M4. So what's the verdict? What are we getting to here? Well, the base price of both of these knives is very similar in their FRN forms, right? If you move up to the Super Freak, you're looking at about 195 bucks. Now you can buy the 20 CV and gray uh, G10 Griptilian for about, what is it, $179, $180, or $15 less and you can get 20 CV, which a lot of people will argue is either better or worse than M4, depending on what they need to use it for, right? But, uh, so right there, you know, if you're somebody who's like, I want 20 CV and I wanna save every penny, right? Then go with the Griptilian, go with that. You know, if you're like, I don't like FRN, I want G10, I want 20 CV, and I want every last dollar to go back in my pocket, go with the Griptilian, right? Um, you can go in and, you know, customize your Griptilian, like this one you're seeing right here, if you want to add G10 to it, you want to add, um, you know, the base price on the website plus G10, believe it or not, is almost the same, if not sometimes more than what the 20 CV version of the Griptilian costs with the gray G10. Why are you paying more money? Because if you want something specific, a specific scale color, and you want, at, you know, a specific blade, you're going to pay to have the option Right? Just to have the option to have that done, you're going to pay extra for it. You don't like that? I, I don't, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of it, but I can completely understand why they do that because you're trying to create your own unique variant. On top of that, in the custom shop, if you want to add custom graphics, I think they even let you upload your own image. Now, some images work better or worse, right? But if you're wanting some custom laser work on the blade, you can only have that done on the Griptilian, right? So if you're looking for like a forest green, I can't tell you how many times I have made a forest green Benchmade Griptilian with satin hardware, and then it's got the gray coated M4 blade in the sheep's foot style. I cannot tell you how many times I have made that knife on the custom shop. But what holds me back are two things. Number one, it costs more money than I'm willing to spend. I think it's well over $200 to have that knife made on the custom shop. And number two, it takes a little bit to get to you. It can take two to three weeks to get the knife to you. But a lot of people do it. And truthfully, you know, you might end up with an all, you know, an all life, a full life Griptilian that's made specifically for you, right? And then the extra money that you pay for it might give you the satisfaction or the, the sort of um, reaffirmation, you know, of your purchase that you're looking for. And a lot of people are plenty happy. And I'll tell you what, I haven't ruled out actually making myself a Griptilian um, on, uh, on the custom shop. Cause that right now is like my dream griptilian. But listen, if you're looking for CPM M4 and a hard use knife and maybe the, the Benchmade griptilian that I just described to you sounds really satisfying. Maybe just a slightly different, maybe you do that in a drop point blade, right? Save yourself 30 to $40 and just get the super freak because it's $195 and arguably one of the better priced knives for what you're getting in terms of Benchmade's lineup. Truthfully, what it comes down to is, is neither knife is better. Uh, and I know you guys hate hearing me say that. Nobody likes to hear me say that on a, um, on a battle video. because Just tell us which one is better, right? The, um, my, I'll tell you which my preference, right? For a user, just, just like a knife that I'm going to go out and use and really depend on. And I live in Midwestern Kansas, by the way, right? 
Um, straight up user, not considering anything else. I'm probably going to go with the Super Freak, right? Because it's got the right steel. It's got plenty of room on the handle. It's got a little bit more cutting edge. Some of it's trivial, but you can get a little bit more cutting edge. And it's got everything else about the Griptilian that I like, right? It just feels like a little bit more robust Griptilian. It's got the right steel. And using it, I'm like, this feels like exactly what I paid for it, you know? Now, somebody who is looking for a user knife or a knife that's just going to sit around on a shelf and you're just going to enjoy it for what it is, right? But you're more of the collector, more of the, like, I want this knife to be me. I want my own personality projected on the aesthetic of this knife. You Go with the Griptilian because this is your, unless you want the FRN version, this is it. This is how the Super Freak looks, period, until they do, inevitably, they will do sprints and I'm hoping they will add this to the custom shop, in which case this video will be obsolete, right? If they ever add the Super Freak to the custom shop, it's game over. Because I'm going to recommend the Super Freak all day over the Griptilian if they ever do that. Um, but if you're looking for, you want a very, you want a coated blade or you want laser work blade and you want S90V or 20CV, I don't know if S90V is on the shop. You better check. But 20CV is definitely on the shop and you want your own specific scale color and you want to be able to control the hardware and the pocket clip and you're willing to pay that extra amount, then yeah, then go with the Griptilian because guess what? At the end of the day, you're looking at, if, if I'm going to give the Super Freak a score of 95, I'm going to give the Benchmade Griptilian a score of 92. Or you can say, I'm giving the Benchmade Griptilian a 97 and the Super Freak is 100. It's so close, right? It's really hard. And I know there's going to be a whole bunch of people going, oh, just buy the, you know, Buy the Ritter Hogue, buy the Ritter Hogue. Well, yeah, again, functionally, I would say the Ritter Hogue probably is the better Griptilian, even though it's not a part of this video. But again, just like when we're comparing to the Super Freak, the main benefit, the main reason to still choose the Benchmade Griptilian over the Ritter Hogue is you have way more customization options, way more. I mean, I tell, I, I talk about hinder knives all the time. You know, a lot of the reason I choose hinder over a bunch of different knives that are arguably just as functional and just as enjoyable is that I get con to control the aesthetic, right? So. Me, somebody who would still choose the Super Freak for uh, completely for utilitarian reasons over the Benchmade Griptilian, number one, I'll admit, it's just barely better, in my opinion. And number two, I, I still would choose the Griptilian if I was looking for a customized thing, right? I mean, it's I haven't ruled it out. I still want to add a permanent Benchmade Griptilian to my collection that has been customized to be exactly what I want it to be. So there's good reasons to buy both, right? I'm not going to say that the Benchmade Griptilian is dead. It's long from dead. It is absolutely a powerhouse competitor to a lot of this new stuff, right? Especially we live in a world where we're paying more and more and more money for materials that are arguably unnecessary. Titanium and carbon fiber is really cool and you can get it for between 200, well, truthfully, because of Tucson now, you can get it for like 150 bucks and you know, up to about the $250 mark, you can get a knife that you know a lot of people would say, we know for the money, this is a lot better. Well, how much do we really need titanium and carbon fiber, right? Some people are going to opt for these lighter weight materials because it's just more comfortable to carry. It's less slippery, right, in some situations. So, yeah, it's really, really tough to say. Um, you know, the, the ultimate knife for customization far and away is the Griptilian. Easy choice um, if you're that type of person or if you don't like the look of this guy. But for a user, slight advantage to the um, to the Benchmade Super Freak. I hope that you guys got something out of this. At the very least, I hope it was entertaining. As usual, there'll be links for both of these knives right down in the description. Um, the basic version of the Benchmade Griptilian and some of the upgraded versions I'll link. And then, of course, uh, the Super Freak and its its base model as well. But in any, any case, guys, I hope you appreciated this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this middle complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.